So, um, I actually have to, I don't know how funny this is. I find it fascinating. The um, Elijah, I know Ansel's familiar with Q, QAnon. Elijah, how much do you know about Q, the Q phenomenon? Ye, I know that it's uh, it's actually Bill Maher, but other than that, I don't know much about it. Yeah. To well, put it to ask it another way, have you heard about this, folks? Hey, have you heard, hey, about, you this heard about this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Q, uh, Q, anonymous, anonymous Q. Yeah. You sound like a black Carl from Aqua Teen right there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need no Q to know how to rock, bitch. Anyway, there's a, um, <laughs> there's a, um, you know, as as for everything, there's a dedicated subreddit to uh, the QAnon phenomenon. Oh no, I bet that's fucking hilarious. Yeah, it's uh, reddit.com slash r slash Great Awakening, and I've kind of been doing this thing. <laughs> it's like I thought about like kind of do doing a shallow dive into this just just to kind of like just to kind of see what it's all about, but I I really. Well, I'm about to give you your shallow dive. I'm about to give you okay. a dive into a shallow pool. Thank you pool. for doing this for me because, like, I don't know. Like, I know you hate conspiracy theories, and this is like. I mean, it really is kind of funny to me, and I would like to know more <laughs> about it, but I don't want to actually go into like 4chan and places no, like no, this. No, no, this is perfect for you. Okay. Like, on occasion, I, I go to the subreddit. Okay. And just kind of like click on the top post to um, just kind of see what's going on. With the uh, the QAnon community, and uh, this is this is what I uh, came up with today. They uh, <laughs> uh, this, this is a picture post. the The title of the post is "Dude, You Just Got to Wonder." And uh, <laughs> Elijah, I'll, I'll send this to you. On, okay. Uh, all right. Open up that link I just sent. All right. One moment. Okay. So you can do the same. So you can see <laughs> yeah, what I've, I've opened. I've so, opened it up. So what we got here? It's a. It's a photograph of uh, four individuals. On the the top left, you have Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. Um, the top right is Adam Schiff, who's a. Uh, do Do you know who these people are, Elijah? I'm familiar uh, with uh, Adam Schiff and the uh, the kid from the Florida high school and yeah, da- uh, David Charles Hart. Manson. Uh, well, the other person is Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. She's a Democratic Socialist that won the Democratic primary for a House of Representatives seat in New York. Ooh, whoop whoop! Yeah. Um, anyway, like it's a very unflattering picture of all four of these uh, folks that just have you know they were of, they were caught mid soy face. It right. looks like uh, <laughs> mid soy face. <laughs> yeah. Right, and they're you know they're bug eyed and um, kind of freaking out. So like that's what they've posted, but the the real gold is in the um, in the Reddit comments. So I'm, I'm going to pull pull that up and read some of those to you. This is um, again, this is r slash Great Awakening, the QAnon subreddit. Uh, great minds. One person here says, uh, "Dude, that Manson Hog comparison is crazy." Um, that's that's one word for it. Uh, somebody says the one on the lower right, which is. Uh, Charles Manson. The one on the lower right looks saner than the others. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, and somebody replies to that by saying, because he was. He's was a little nutty, but definitely completely sane. You should read up on some of his writings. Oh my goodness. Here's one that says that I'm willing to bet Manson was the most sane of that bunch, or at least the most intelligent. And somebody replies to that saying, probably probably both, lol. Manson was an interesting fellow if you actually read what he wrote and listened to him instead of just what the media said about him. Uh-huh. Just like Ted Kaczynski. Seriously? <laughs> Seriously? Like, I'm not, like, I can't make this stuff up on the spot. Um, <sighs> CIA Project MK Ultra, enough said. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Elaborate, please, random Reddit asshole. So yeah, that's that's funny banner for you. Get you in the right state of mind. Oh, dude, it, it, uh, it does kind of tie into this. I mean, well, yeah. it just goes to show that we're living in an age of reason. Absolutely. Man. Oh, uh, have have you heard about this? There's a um, 
there's an interesting new like wrinkle in the the D's nuts phenomenon. The, the Sugma. And the, the Sugma. <laughs> no, not that one. But uh, <laughs> no, it's more it's more a traditional classic D's nuts. Um, it's uh, you. You asked somebody. Wait, did you did you say there's a new wrinkle in D's nuts? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh you say you ask you ask somebody if they like Wendy's. Like, yeah, I like Wendy's. You like you like Wendy's <laughs> you like Wendy's nuts? I don't know. Come at you or something like that. Hit you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome back for another edition of The Book Club, The Podcast, coming to you live from Parts Unknown. Um, You'll have to ask Q where we are. How are you guys doing? I'm doing well. How are you? All right, doing great, doing great. Uh, I'm Elijah Crowder. I'll be the conch holder on this this, this sailing of uh, HMS listenership. Uh, Go ahead and introduce yourselves. I'm Ansel. I am Dylan. There you go. Now you're no longer anonymous. All right. And uh, we are the podcast known as The Book Club. Um, all right. Um, so when we left you two weeks ago, we decided that on this go round, we were going to read Thomas Paine's uh, Age of Reason. Uh, so let's jump right into it. Uh, let's say, Dylan, you go first this time. Tell me what you thought. Um, here's my thoughts. I, I enjoyed it for the most part. I was very surprised, like when you first suggested reading a Thomas Paine pamphlet. I was kind of concerned that it was going to be like a a rehash of the Scarlet Letter because I have great disdain for the way people in the uh, late eighteenth, earliest, early nineteenth century wrote. Like it was, uh, mm-hmm. I said it back in that episode. It was, it's needlessly arcane, mm-hmm. um, but it was very refreshing on how how Thomas Paine wrote this to be accessible by everyone. And, and, and that was obviously intentional. And I really dug that. Um, I agreed with pretty much everything he said, which kind of made it like a little boring. Mm-hmm. Like it was just, mm-hmm. I mean, these are all arguments that I have either already heard or, um, had, you know, found my own way to. And also, um, I, I don't know about y'all, but my experience with Thomas Paine in like public school history classes, all I knew about Thomas Paine was that he wrote Common Sense and that that was, you know, instrumental to the building of the uh, Revolutionary War. Mm -hmm. Um, But other than that, like it was never really explained like who he was, what he did. Uh, And another thing, like when you first said this was going to be our next read, I was worried that Thomas Paine was just going to be another, like, I just assumed that he was another um, kind of like Jefferson and uh, all the other mm-hmm. founding fathers who, with a straight face, signed a document that all men are created equal while they own slaves. Right. So right. I, I was pleasantly surprised to learn that, you know, he was also a strict abolitionist. Um, and, yeah, I'm now like a big thomas Paine fan he's one of my one of the only like early americans that i actually can get behind right on good deal ansel you're uh you're stab um i basically just want to take what dylan said and just carbon copy it because um yeah I feel, I feel the same way um i i've i i don't remember reading hearing or reading about thomas Paine in high school um but I did like after September the 11th, 2001, I had like a phase where I was like really into America, you know? And wait, so wait, like, which, which September 11th was that again? The, the one in 2001. One of the, okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I remember that one. One of the most okay. unpleasant September 11th mm-hmm. we've had. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Sorry. Um, but yeah, I've read, I read 
I, I don't think I read the whole thing, but I read excerpts from Common Sense, Rights of Man, and I really mm-hmm. liked it. Like like Dylan was saying, I like that it's not stilted, um, like stilted prose or whatever. But on the other hand, it was like I agreed with everything. I didn't. I hadn't thought about or heard or encountered every point that he made. But to me, it's like it's kind of common sense. <laughs> no, it's like. It's it's like I'm way past the point. I'm like in a very much a post religious existence, right? Yeah, you know? yeah. Like, um, and it, it felt a little bit like being dragged back into something that I already sorted out, right? Yeah, that's so yeah. it was a little bit boring in that way. But I liked it. I think it's I, you know, uh, you know, I think he's I think he's great. Well, all right, T Pain, the original T Pain. The <laughs> 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 Y'all need some common sense. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see here. I've got a somewhere on here. Oh wait, where is it? I saved a, a Reddit post, and now I can't find it because they've changed Reddit on my phone. Was it uh, at r slash Great Awakening? Um, no, no, it wasn't. Um, hold on, oh, bear with me. Bear with wh- me one moment. Okay. While, while, while you're digging for that, I'm, I'm going to bring something up here. I was uh, okay. I did a, I did a little bit of um, uh, digging into the Wikipedia pages for both Thomas Paine and uh, Age of Reason. Um, and this is about the. Um, we might get to this later. Oh, on. Oh, good, good. I was I was going to ask you to do that anyway, but it's cool. Go ahead. Well, I think I've got some highlighted sections that kind of coincide with this um but this is from the wikipedia for age of reason it says uh and this is specifically about like the reaction to it in america Mm -hmm. um men such as benjamin franklin and thomas jefferson espoused its tenets uh, uh, the tenets of age of reason while at the same time arguing that religion served the useful purpose of quote-unquote social control um so yeah even though they they agreed with the tenets of it they they still liked religion because it kept the masses in check but they they themselves like had disparaging things to say about religion i don't know what the chronology of what they said but you know they were not like I christian think they were also and, deists like uh, yeah. thomas paine was i mean they were they, you know compared to i mean they couldn't be farther from like evangelical type christians well um Another founding father, John Adams, um, said this about uh, Thomas Paine regarding common sense. He said, uh, without the pen of the author of common sense, the sword of Washington would have been raised in vain. That's, 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 a, that's a groovy quote. Mm-hmm. But uh, John Adams also said about the age of reason, uh, this is in a letter to a, a friend of his, Benjamin Waterhouse. Um, oh, yeah, old Ben. Oh, Made yeah. up name. <laughs> Friend of the I'm show. Will, I'm willing you should call this the age of frivolity as you do, and would not object if you had named it the age of folly, vice, frenzy, brutality, demons, Bonaparte, Tom Paine, or the age of the burning brand from bottomless pit, or anything but the age of reason. I know not whether any man in the world has had more influence on its inhabitants or affairs for the last 30 years than Tom Paine. There can be no severer satire on the age. For such a mongrel between pig and puppy, begotten by a wild boar on a bitch wolf, never before in any age of the world was <laughs> suffered by the poltroonery of mankind to run through such a career of mischief. Call it then the age of pain. So apparently uh, John Adams is not a fan of uh, what uh, what the pain train has to bring to him. <laughs> I, I remember I read somewhere that Teddy Roosevelt called... Thomas Paine, a filthy atheist. Yeah. Um, which I think Thomas Paine was a, also a deist, right? According right. to Yeah, like, absolutely. According to this book, that's the sense I get. Right, right. This this book is actually wide known as a as a treatise, a support on deism. As opposed to the uh Christian church, I guess you could say. Yeah. I like that uh, uh, old Adams there called him Tom Payne. Getting close to that T-Pain moniker we've been looking for. (laughs) All right, guys. I found this article. 
thank you for that, Dylan. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks, uh, thanks, bro. Good job there. Um, I found this article, um, and uh, let's see. For full disclosure, it's from an a online source, thebritishleft.com. Um, so I'm assuming this is a left wing liberal um, fake news. Yep. But I like fake news anyway. Um, so here we go. Uh, the headline is a growing number of American adults are rapidly abandoning religion. New research found. Uh, the tag to that is uh, the number of Americans who don't identify with any religion jumped from 36.6 million in 2007 to 55.8 million in 2014. Um, Dylan, I'm going to ask you first. Is this a direct consequence of the millennium coming to age? Yes. All right, good. Um, is this is this is this uh, heartening for either of you as it is for me? I, I don't know. Uh, let's see. It was the Pew Research Center. I think they're pretty trustworthy. Um, but you know how these surveys go. There's always a percentage of error. Um, either way, the the trend is showing a a growth in the non-religious or I guess you could say atheist or secular. Uh, population of the United States. And here's my thinking on this. And this is why I picked the age of reason. You guys know how, you know, you know the pendulum theory, right? Yeah. So uh, you just briefly explain it. Well, I'm for, not really, for our, for the for, listenership. I don't know those, what you're talking about. To okay, what I, it might be, it might be a little murky. It's, it's like this. When you have a huge push to the right, there's always a huge backlash to the left. Yeah, okay. And then there's always a huge push to the right and a huge backlash. And it's, it's, um, I thought you meant that. The, Through, I thought the pen, the real pendulum theory is that the period and frequency of a pendulum is uh, like the, equal to the length and mass. Well, or whatever. It's, it varies according to the length and the not according to the mass or the 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 breadth of the swing. Guys, we're not doing Edgar Allan Poe this week. Okay. All yeah. right. Um, so here's here's my thinking on that. A, um, I, I think this is a good thing. Um, are we going to have a new age of reason? Is is it going to happen? Uh, not in this country. It's not going to happen. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. Um, well, let's here's think the, about that, and let's let's just keep that in mind as we go on through the book. Here, just in response to that, like here's the thing: the it is heartening that there is a a movement away from organized religion. That's always a good thing in my mind. But like, you still have like a lot. Like we were talking about the QAnon people, a lot of like the, uh, um, you know, the, the anonymous hacker collective, mm-hmm. like just because you're an atheist doesn't mean you're not a dickhead. Like I, I found that out, like kind of by being on Reddit. There's a lot of uh, yeah, like the the quote the neck beards, the the people that like net beards what. Net beards, neck beards. Oh, neck beards. Okay. Do you know what I do? People that wear like fedoras and like shirts with like dragons on them, and like can't grow a proper beard, so it only comes in on the neck. Like, <laughs> this is the first year hearing about neck beards. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but, like those people are almost like uniformly all about like atheism and logic and reason but they're still they're still just like total dickheads yeah it's yeah like they sam, also sam harris i know is like probably their uh like the incels like I'm, yeah i'm sure if if you think that you are mm-hmm. so ugly that you can't have sex then you probably don't believe in god you're they're probably still, a neck beard yeah go stock but, up on vape juice yeah, they're still just like awful, awful people, though. So, yeah, just because things are less religious doesn't necessarily mean it's better. Like, yeah, and like even the thing with like the new atheism uh, from like 10 years ago or whatever, like people were still like, well, what can we do? How can we start our own church? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, what, what can we do? Like, what part of what organization can we be a part of? It's like, you're not. Yeah, I don't know. Well, see, here's the thing. Like, I I think churches do serve a a good purpose in a community when like because you know they really serve as like a a community, a center for the community, a, a heart for the community. And if you can divorce that away from like bad ideology and just like people trying to make a profit then it, it can be a positive f- 
force and, um, you know, help people like learn who their neighbors are and then, you know, foster a sense of true community. But on the other hand, I think it creates way more division because you have like, you, you have like your church of Christ or whatever. Well, see, that's that's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. If you can divorce it from that, then then they they can't do that though. Well, see, and here's the other side of that. You know that uh, American Family Radio asshole Brian Fisher. Uh, I listen to that guy when I'm in the states because, well, because I, I like to check up on my enemies. Um, he was actually saying that churches ought to be tax free because they do provide this, you know, citizen building for free to the American government. I mean, they're sending out good people. Uh, I find that to be unequivocally false. Wrong. That's wrong. That's not what they're doing. And and. You're talking about you divorcing it and 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 divorcing I don't know the morals the the Godhead from from the actual business of being an organization or a church in the community. It's not a day that goes by that you don't hear of some priest or pastor diddling little boys and girls, man. Here's constantly, constantly, I, I, sexually I, I, repressed neck beards themselves. All right. This is the and and and, and you, they're and they're harbored and they're protected and supported by these uh, by these brainwashed dimwits. I, I, you can't support that for for whatever good it might bring about. It's the evil that is tenfold. Here's uh, you're, y- y'all both kind of like I think missed my point. I think the the institution of a a gathering place in a community where people gather and do things as a community. I think that is a good thing. Like, but that's not what happens. <laughs> that, that was my point. Exactly. Well, the, the Boy I, Scouts are a good thing then. And it's divorced from any of this mystic hocus pocus. I'm, I'm talking, I'm talking about, you know, pure hypothetical. Like this is just, Oh, like a, I think that the idea of having this building in a community where people come together and they, you know, have a gathering together where, you know, you learn who the other people are in your community and there's, you share a community experience. I think that is a good thing. I agree with that. For a community. Yes. Sort of a community center type. Right. Yeah. There's no conjunction after that. No, but... Earn. Well, I mean, the but is like you you have to you have to separate it from the the rotten ideology. Yeah, yeah, this is true, but this will never happen. That's what, that's what I'm saying. That's my point that I think you're missing. Can you you can't give me one example where like the existence like I mean, if you had a town with only one church, then yeah, that would be that would probably tick your boxes or whatever, but. Never happens. In the town we grew up in was there not like a there there's, there was like a nine hundred people in the town we grew up with. And okay. there was like one church for every twenty people. True. And uh, was there not like uh, there was a church? <laughs> I mean, it was segregated too because you had uh, you know I, not that I not that I know of. I don't think that any there was any racial integration in either of the churches right not that i can no so, not that i know of no so how is that like a community gathering device? well it's not i mean it, well it is like there it's the white community gathering it's the black community <laughs> gathering. it's the uh baptist community gathering it's yeah. the first free will baptist gathering and the methodist mm-hmm. gathering yeah, and that's not the community in the sense you were talking no, about no not at all you know i always wanted to go to like a primitive baptist church because I always had this mental image of like, aren't, aren't they all <laughs> primitive? <laughs> well, I just always had this image of I don't I don't know what the denomination like what the Flint name Stone's is supposed to mean. And like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everybody exactly. pulls up in there. <laughs> exactly. The organ is just like a bunch of prehistoric yeah. birds that they're like pressing their toes. Uh, like they're so like, hey, man, like, they say like, yabba do. Yeah, there's some witch doctor with a bone <laughs> through her nose playing like a pipe organ made out of human bones. <laughs> No, turn to like, your, like turn those, to your uh, it's like cat piano where like you press the key and like, <laughs> <laughs> all right guys all right let's get into the book i got a quote let's get okay. us going while we're talking about this um hypocrisy he points out hypocrisy thomas Paine does that a lot in this book and he's pretty snarky about it as well uh dylan like you were saying the 
it's not written in an archaic manner, so you can really get some of the snarkiness. Um, this wasn't snarky, but it was pretty much dead on. He says, uh, one thing, however, is much less equivocal, which is that out of the matters contained in these books, together with the assistance of some old stories, the church has set up a system of religion very contradictory to the character of the person whose name it bears. It has set up a religion of pomp and of revenue in pretended imitation of a person whose life was humility and poverty. I find this to be a hundred percent spot on. And yeah. as you said, like there was very little in here to disagree with other than deism. I mean, he's kind of heavy on deism and the, not I, but, um, him pointing that out in 1797, uh, you didn't have all the denominations that you have today uh, where you could, you could, um, say such a thing and, and have it be, relevant then as it is now is that amazing to you guys or that it's still so relevant that supposedly there was going to be an age of reason that never seemed to happen and in fact things i don't know things are worse yay nay what do you think yeah that's pretty good and i think i've got i think i've got i think i've got the very next thing highlighted as well uh, no, go says, on then yeah uh, the christian theory is little else than the idolatry of the ancient mythologists accommodated to the purposes of power and revenue and it yet remains to reason and philosophy to abolish the amphibious fraud. That was a, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. just just kind of add on to that. I don't know if it's like right after he said that, but I think it's in the same same section. Right. And um, yeah, it's just uh, yeah, I, I don't have a whole lot to say on, on top of it. Like I said, it's just like yeah. Let's, well, here's but, the thing. But it is, it is pretty incredible that it, it was. What did you say? Seventeen ninety. 97 I believe but before you before you jump in Ansel I want to hear something I want you to think about too in reference to this quote Joel Osteen and we've talked about brother Osteen Osteen on the show before um and what what is it called Dylan this uh pros, prosperity prosperity, prosperity theology prosperity gospel. Prosperity, prosperity gospel that's what it is all right Ansel go ahead well I was just saying I I, I like in the last four or five years I, I've tried to be real careful about when you say like an, an age of reason in America, or and stuff, uh, stuff like that, like I really don't. I mean, the only thing I really know, since I've only ever lived in the South, the only thing that I know is like uh, evangelical Christianity, which is a, which is an absolute shit show, and I hate it. Uh, but I don't know. Like I don't think it's. I, I know. That, I understand that there are similar places everywhere but I, I don't think it's this bad in the in other parts of the country like i think vermont is pretty uh pretty irreligious and i bet if we were living in vermont we would have a completely different take on it but since we only see like evangelical what, what i think of is like seriously i think of it as uh evangelical fascism is what i like the term that i use in my head um Having only known that, yeah, it's like I have a pretty dire, or you know, I, I'm pretty, pretty pessimistic about enlightenment or whatever, an age of mm -hmm. reason in this in this country. But you know, my my, my point of view is very limited, I guess. So I, I have to be uh, I careful about that. You know what I mean? I like that evangelical fascism. That's I like that. That's uh, that that came from your head, and now it's in mine. Thank yeah, you. Well, That's thank you. Uh, uh, good. Yeah. Gift. Nice. Going back to what you were saying, Elijah, about uh, equating like Joel Osteen to this, I, I think that has always kind of existed with religion. I mean, you go back absolutely to, in the Bible where, it, where Jesus allegedly, you know, this is in Revelation. Jesus apparently threw the the money changers out of the church or whatever. What, what's the story? <laughs> Elijah would know. He read that Lamb, the Gospel according to <laughs> Christ's childhood pal. Mm -hmm. He expelled, um, he expelled like the bankers or whatever from the church. Yeah, yeah, the money changers from the temple. Yeah, um, but I mean, basically all. I mean, just look at the Vatican. Look at the gold and shit that the Vatican has. Um, you look at Scientology. Any any organized religion is essentially a, a grift. And did you, they're did, ma did, making money hand over fist, and they have been for thousands yeah. of years. Did you ever see that Sarah Silverman YouTube video where it was like, "Save the Vatican, feed the world." 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should. Yeah. Me. Uh, listeners out there, if you haven't seen that, drop what you're doing, which is listening no, to us, no, as no. you should be. Finish, finish <laughs> Go check listening. out that YouTube video and then come back to us. No, no. Fin- it's fine. Don't take a break. Yeah. Take a break and then re-download this podcast and start it where you left off. Um, yeah, it's it's sickening to me the, the the obvious hypocrisy and the money that flows into the church and uh, I think Jeff Sessions is now trying to set up some sort of uh, task force to make sure of religious liberties. You know, as long as it's Christian religious liberties, I'm sure um, he's going to be all over that. But uh, this push to have churches. Um, remain tax free as if anyone is seriously talking about taxing them it just kind of shows that they they know themselves and they're kind of shitting their in their own boots that as much political influence as they've put into this last election to have this ass clown in washington now uh which they support despite his debauchery and wanting to screw his own child and and you know just the disgusting thing that is the predatory donald j trump yeah, okay, we're fake news now and 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 I know Q is is listening. But the guy's got so many like sexual harassment claims, teenagers saying oh he was peeking on us at the Miss Teen USA shows. They are Yeah, he is these, an absolute absolutely a, a vile creep, yeah. Right, right. No and these and, so. and, and these and, people and, are transparently you know, ridiculous. Like, right and 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 like called on tape saying I, I i i grab her by the by the genitals i, I can do that i can yeah. get away with it you know and, and he gets a pass he 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 totally gets a pass because and i've watched um interviews with these people on youtube these evangelical women sitting around in circles saying well you know he's a uh, that's that's not him now that was him then and and he's he's the one god has chosen for us and i'm like how the f- fuck can you believe that that's because he's uh is god so vengeful and spiteful he's the he is going to bring about uh the the uh i'm not sure what the armageddon (laughs) is that is that what you're going he's going to bring about them overturning roe v wade oh yeah yeah, that's why they love him yeah no everything else is admissible uh and yeah so that's what that is that's all it is you don't have to bang your head on a wall these people Mm -hmm. don't really care right about anything else well i i think i think i think the people in the like the higher ups in both you know the republican party and in church organizations the, the preachers and, and shit like that they don't care i think the the people that elijah's talking about like the little church ladies making excuses i think they they do believe what they're saying but it's just because they they're so delusional to this point that they just well, take whatever their preacher says and, and just goes with it. Right. I think it's because they feel not believing it would be sinful and would damn them to an eternity of worse than Trump as president, which I can't envision anyway. Um, well, all right. Here's the thing with Trump. It was, uh, you know, it was sort of a jaw dropping outcome that took, uh, you know, left me and I'm sure most other people in shock. But, the, there, there is a silver. There is definitely a silver lining with with Trump. Like these, um, the a lot of these institutions that were granted, uh, what's the word, Dylan? They were sort of granted, like carte blanche. No, I don't know what you're getting at. <sighs> the these the institutions that we were just sort of brought up to to just respect to respect like. It's like I, I'm so I, I hate how inarticulate I'm being right now, but like I it, guess I, it, let me let me put it this brought, way: it's brought a magnifying glass on the very institutions of America. Like it's, we, it's so bizarre that this person is the president that we're beginning to question everything that led up to this point. Yeah, I'm, okay. I guess I guess it's it's clear now that the point of all of these institutions has really always been to uh grant power to the white property owning of uh, you know white the, male the, ru- the ruling class yeah the ruling class the white male property owners uh and that's that's really all it is and this is just kind of like 
you know, the curtain's been pulled back and the cards yeah. are on the table. We know we know what we're dealing with now. So we don't have to pretend to like we don't have to have uh reverence for the branches of government. Uh the whole the whole system is like transparently uh it's ag- fucked. against <laughs> it's it's fucked. It's transparently against the people yeah. in favor of uh the white ruling class. Yeah, and and just to ca- so we can thank Trump for being for for him for helping to bring that into that, the yeah. open. Yes, uh, and yeah, if Hillary Clinton had won, like the same shit would be going on. Yeah, but you know, all the you know liberals would just be marching on because they, you know she's respectable and yeah, sure, you know, she's the first woman president. Yeah, they'd so. be very proud about that. But yeah. still, like everything would be funneling the power up to the the ruling class. So I think it's I think it's about time that we you know uh, this is this is interesting interesting discussion and uh, I think it's time we just sit back and take a minute you know Eli just beat it up beat it <laughs> all right welcome to Elijah's Media Minute this is the part of the show where we break down one minute of a varied media source and talk about it for one minute each of us will have 30 seconds to uh, reply or laugh or talk about how ridiculous or awesome presented media was dylan you're gonna go first okay when do i start you start now all right i want to take my minute to talk about the works of the late great uh, Scatman John Larkin. Uh, if you haven't listened to the entire album Scatman's World, it is a beautiful, beautiful vision of a uh, post capitalist utopia. Uh, specifically, you need to check out the song, the song of Scatland. It's uh, towards the end of the album. It's great. Um, John Larkin was a visionary. Um, yeah, he's he's amazing. Uh, it's I, I can't. Like unironically, I enjoy this album. It every time I put Not it iron- on. Sorry. Every time I put it on, it puts a smile on my face, and I just feel good. Um, I used to be a Marxist Leninist. Now I'm a Marxist Scatist. Um, <laughs> Five seconds. Uh, <coughs> listenership, go to the. Um, All right, stop. Oh. <laughs> All right, Ansel. Thirty seconds. Retort. Go now. I have a very hard time believing that you like it unironically. Unironically. Uh, um Scatman John is, is is wonderful though. I have a like a theory I'm working on that Scatman John is actually Captain Beefheart because uh <laughs> I mean it's the same kind of uh left left fieldedness. Um and um yeah, I don't know. He's he's he is very catchy and uh everybody jam Scatman's World. I get those songs stuck in my head. All right. Time up. All right. All right. And I am starting now. Dylan, um, all all I'm going to say about it is is everybody stutters one way or another. (laughs) Um, If you're if you're if you're down into this, you know, I guess sort of you could call it a scat land of thought. um, I don't really have much to tell you except uh, all right, my 30 seconds are up. <laughs> All right, very good. Ansel, you ready for us? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, starting in three, two, one, go. Uh, Street Sharks was a cartoon <laughs> in the mid 90s. Uh, it was about uh, these four brothers who were accidentally transformed into these anthropomorphic sharks uh and they use like skateboarder <laughs> slang and they um they loved hamburgers uh they said jawsome that was their catchphrase <laughs> so uh <laughs> i i got the other day i was like you know what I, i'm i'm curious about the story i wonder how long it was before they were sued so i went on the <laughs> wikipedia article there's no mention in the wikipedia article about ninja turtles at all <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> <laughs> It's astonishing to me. Something that's, uh, uh, you know, d- to say the least, it's derivative uh, is not even mentioned in the in the Wikipedia article, and that just, I think that's great. In five seconds. Uh, it's like mentioning the monkeys without ever talking about the Beatles or something like that. <laughs> All right, very good, Dylan. Thirty seconds to reply on Street Shark starts now. 
man, the Street Sharks action figures were the bomb diggity <laughs> back in the day. Um, I, w- I would say less of a, you know, a copycat of Ninja Turtles, more of a homage to the Ninja Turtles. Um, <laughs> But yeah, uh, Street Sharks is Canadian, wasn't it? It was, it Canadian, was Canadian, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty Jawsome. <laughs> In five seconds, or are you uh, done? Uh, Jawsome. Uh, it's Jawsome. 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 All right, very good. We've got uh, Street Sharks and Scat Man. <laughs> uh, let's get your 30 seconds on uh, Street Sharks. Um, starting now. All right. Well, I don't remember Street Sharks at all. I guess I was when uh, the nineties. Yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah, you would have been in I, high school. I don't remember that. I mean, it reminds me of GoBots. There were like back in the day, you had Transformers, and then there was like GoBots, which were just like Transformers with lisps. I mean, they they had like software issues or something, um, so you could get them as cut rate. Transformers. Uh, I remember getting some for Christmas as a small child and being very upset that I was like, there's no Autobot symbol. All right, that's my 30 seconds on um, Street Sharks, which I don't remember. All right, um, my media minute. I'm going to start now. I want to talk to you about a book that I read. Uh, it's called the lamb the gospel according to biff <laughs> christ childhood pal i've read it i don't i don't think we've read it in the book club um I, I, I think I've read it. I don't. I don't think either of you have you read it. You keep accusing me of not reading it. Uh, I read yeah, some. Uh, of it. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm totally joking. Uh, what I did want to talk about was uh, I'm just going to get it here in the last minute because it doesn't need a plug. Is uh, God is not great by Christopher Hitchens, which Ansel gave me my first copy of it, uh, or like loaned a copy of it to me, and I. I uh, was reading through pain, and I kept constantly thinking about how far Hitchens would have not gone without T Pain. Uh, so good stuff. If you if you like the kind of stuff that we've read this week, and that's the end of my time. But yeah, go check out. Uh, God is not great. Ansel, uh, I appreciate you appreciating me. Um, Christopher Hitchens, he he did and said some things that were kind of inexcusable. So it's like it's hard for me to recommend anything by him. But I do, I did really enjoy and probably will enjoy again watching him debate people on youtube it's mm-hmm. a lot of fun to watch uh, but as a uh critique of religion i think t-pain uh is much you know sub- far superior to hitch all right dylan yeah i've never read any hitchens um and i don't really feel like i need to kind of like uh what we're about to get back to here in just a few seconds I don't really need to like read s- something where it's just like religion is bad. Like I like like Ansel said earlier, I, I'm just it's something that I've already processed and I'm kind of done with it. So uh, yeah, I'll probably unless uh, unless a group of people like demands that I read that book, <laughs> I'll probably never read that book. <laughs> Hmm, duly noted. All right, well, thank you for tuning in. Uh, I think we're going to get ready to sign out here. You've spent another, I don't know how long that took, maybe six precious Three. minutes. Anyway, yeah. Elijah's... Elijah's media minute. <laughs> that absolutely never gets old. All right. That is nice. I'm not going to lie. That is really that you did an outstanding job on that answer. Thank you. Uh, that and your kisser ACDC. All right. Well, so yeah, what we ended on there was, that a, too. yeah, that's just amazing. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Ansel's done all of the music for the podcast. Uh, uh, well, except for uh, Hugs. We had the, the band Hugs yeah. came and, and did that's a song true. for us. Also, but, uh, we, we got some uh, John Ashcroft came in the studio and yeah, recorded that's some uh, oh, Eagle I, Soar for us. I forgot about it. I forgot about that Eagle Soar yeah. in the studio. And also Thunderman's Rule. By God, I mean, when he was voice. singing, I don't know about you guys, but when he was singing that, I teared up. I, I honestly yeah. did. I mean, oh, that's I, just. I, put, I popped a full little patriotism boner about that uh, <laughs> Eagle Soar. I think I got a uh I think I got a new wrinkle in these nuts. <laughs> <laughs> John Ashcroft, my god, what a dead eyed psycho that guy is. Oh man. My favorite story about Ashcroft is him like draping the naked breast of Lady Justice. I think it was David Cross oh, yeah. that talked about him and just he couldn't handle that stone cold titty staring at him all day. <laughs> what what was the story of, like something with John Ashcroft, they went into the hospital and somebody was in the hospital and they kinda like 
put somebody who was in a coma and like made him sign a document. I think that was John Ashcroft. Oh my right, I got I got to check my four chan. Yeah, <laughs> but get in I, touch with Q. I'm sure I'm sure Q can set you straight and that that never happened, that that's just liberal media bullshit. Um, what we talked about there at the end of Elijah's Media Minute is kind of where I want to go with this uh, this uh, conclusion of our show. I think we're running up on time pretty quickly here, but it's been a good discussion without discussing the book so much. Um, and That's another reason I picked this book, guys, and I think we're pretty much like all three of us have said. It gets boring reading through it. It's I found myself bored to tears reading it yeah. Um, yeah. because yeah. I agree with most of what's in it. And, you know, it's... It's arguments that, like you said, we've come across ourselves or, or points or things that we've come to ourselves. I mean, he did have he, some, he, like, dynamite points that I'd never even thought about. But, like, I, that, that's, like, the extent of my notes is just, like, me highlighting it going, damn, or, like, yes, queen, or something <laughs> well, like that. I mean, that really is my notes. Like, yeah. And I got a few that's of them what I, If you want me that's to read what some I, later. Yeah, I do. I do. I, we're going to get to that, like, right now. Um, the uh, But the reasoning behind this is I know that we pretty much – more or less agree on this. Um, it, there's not going to be an age of reason unless people like us are willing to openly discuss this and and put ourselves in the in the trenches, as they like to say, on the all Jesus station there in Tupelo. Uh, we we've we really we really have a. I know Ansel and I both have children. We really have a moral obligation to see to it that as many people as possible can sort of see through the need for something like this. And I think Thomas Paine could see through the need for something like this. And it's, and it's so easy and so liberating to get through something like this. Um, but I think that's why we're discussing and that's why I wanted to read this. And that's why I wanted to discuss this in an open and public manner. Uh, so any comments as to that go he, he, and I, then I, I, any he, quotes, he, 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 we're both like any, chopping at the bit. Yeah. Uh, any, any quotes. Yeah, go. Okay, I just want to push back a little bit on what you just said. Um, I don't think we will ever be rid of uh, toxic religion, uh, specifically in America. And then this might go back to what Ansel was saying about how we, you know, we were all born and raised in the rural South of America, um, the United States, Southern United States, the the heart of Dixie, the Bible Belt, simplify. Um, I, I just believe it's too ingrained into the culture to ever get rid of. I think you have to get rid of the culture in order to get rid of it. And I just, I, I don't think that can be done. Uh, to, to dovetail with that, I think the problem, the, what you call culture, like I don't really see it as culture. It's just like um, rabid individualism. Like, there, there is no community in this country. Like you were saying, like it, it is good to have a church to have some sort of community center, uh, but the church isn't that. And like you know, every every all families are just sort of in their own bubble, and you know they they. I don't think that's true, specifically in the south. I, I think the the churches do serve as a of a cornerstone of these you know sub communities really. Um, I don't think it's just family bubbles. I think they're larger bubbles of several families. And, yeah, I disagree with that. I don't buy it, but I don't know. You, I don't I guess the thing, the thing that I, I kept thinking about when you're talking, Elijah, what do you, what exactly do you want to happen? Like, what is the best case scenario for you? The best case scenario would be what the, framers put into the constitution to begin with which is a total separation of church and state i don't want political i don't want PACs getting money from churches that are not taxed influencing elections and a first and foremost i want religion out of schools entirely that's the way it's supposed to be i just read an argument where a guy was saying that the framers of the constitution did that to protect churches and not the state it's a two-way fucking street ladies and gentlemen you cannot mix church and state there are reasons on both sides for that. So if the churches want to remain tax free, good. But you can't tell them this like this this just keep it to yourself sort of mentality. That's not what they do. They're evangelicals. They have to proselytize. I want them to just leave everybody the fuck alone. I mean, this this uh, 
constant talking about the homosexual agenda as if the homosexuals get together on weekends and wear, you know, the same tattoo and and sacrifice a goat in the name of Satan so they they can I don't I don't so they have more help in their uh overcoming the church which is apparently all the homosexuals want to do is burn churches i don't i don't get this nobody is coming after these people yet they are constantly on the edge of oh we're being persecuted for our beliefs oh we're being oh there was a oh, god damn uh, a guy just let his little baby die in michigan right uh, like they, they starved the baby to death and, and didn't take the baby for medical help because they believed God was going to fix it. And now they're crying, oh, we're being persecuted for, I'm like, no, you're being persecuted for murder, you dick. You murdered a child. Like, I, like the, the insanity has to go. If you want to be religious, fine. Everyone's, everyone's totally entitled to believe what they want to believe. But there's, there's like this age old adage in America that where your rights trample on my rights is where your rights end and your right to be a narcissistic, uh, fairy tale believing idiot who believes we should all believe what you believe has to stop. That has to stop. That is, that is the end goal. Can't stop. Won't stop. <laughs> it's yeah, absolutely right. I know it's a losing battle, but the more it's talked about, the more it's talked about, the, m- the more we'll get to that someday. Not in our lifetimes, not in our children's or grandchildren's lifetimes. But it's got to, you've, you've got to fight that fight. I don't know. The facts were there even in Thomas Paine's time. I don't think it's going anywhere. I think it is kind of like human nature and uh, to subscribe to some religion and to, and to sort of uh, fit into the, the larger community culture. I don't know. But I think like... As far as I think it was, I think it was human nature to to dig into religion when you didn't know what made the volcano go boom. Well, here's the thing: even though we know like scientific facts about the natural world, it's still just fucking scary to be an alive human being, and it always will be. So yeah, I think people always will look for uh, look for these answers to unanswerable questions. Um. Yeah, and I think uh, that I, I, this is something that I thought about years ago. Maybe, I, maybe I'm okay with the fact that there are some things we just don't know, you know. And some pe- people, yeah. some people can't. That doesn't sit well with some people, I guess. But I'm okay with, without no. I mean, with acknowledging that there's a lot more that we don't know than we do know, and that's going to be the case for the, right. until the end of the species. I mean, we're not going to figure it all out. Yeah. Um, and we also owe a great deal to our parents for not indoctrinating us at a very early age. We were kind of each allowed to come to our own conclusions regarding religion you know, yeah. on our own. But I think about that, too. Even if we were indoctrinated, I don't think we would have I don't think it would have made a difference. I think we, I, I think it would. I nah. think it would, because there are smart people that ascribe to this stuff. And it's it's because they 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 ascribe to it at a very early age and it becomes a part of their very being they are so tied up that you know this is who they are they are a christian they are a muslim okay let me let me put it this way well, let me stop you right there let, let me, me stop let me you right there this, Elijah, no let me stop let you me, right there let me hold insert on, hold myself on. for the first time in my life right here let me say something <laughs> um i i was absolutely believe the story of in the bible in the christian bible uh i prayed every night i was a model christian until i was probably about 10 or 11 or something like that and uh, I want to hear. I want to hear like from you guys. I want to. I want you to tell me when you lost your religion. Um, as as Michael stated, like when when the seeds of doubt were planted for you guys. But I, I actually remember pretty vividly when that first was like when the, when it first hit me. Like oh maybe this is maybe this is. I wouldn't have said bullshit at the time, but whatever. My ten year old Christian. Yeah. Because I was, yeah, exactly. Because I was a good Christian, but um, like it was the story. It was in Sunday school, the story of Jonah and the whale, where Jonah and T Pain talks a little bit about it here. Uh, but he his his thing was like, well, that a Gentile had to have written this account, but that's not where I'm going. Like, just the the idea of being eaten by a whale or a giant fish or whatever, and you know being. Sw- swimming in the ocean for months and then being spit up as a kid i was like okay that never happened <laughs> so it wasn't like 
indoctrination or not, I 100% totally believed it. And then all of a sudden I was like, wait a minute. Okay. Maybe not. And then like in the in the actual uh lecture or whatever, the the sermon. The sermon. Uh I was kind of shaken and then he's he was talking about Jesus walking on the water and I was like, wait, maybe this never happened either. And it just kind of unraveled pretty quickly after yeah. that, you know? So I don't think like even if our parents were super religious, I don't think uh and if they made us go to church, I don't think it would have Well see, the thing any- is if 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 we had grown up in a super religious household once you had had that realization, like you wouldn't have had a choice otherwise. Well, I still kept my mouth shut about my atheism, like. Yeah. But you know, I was, you know, like in before basketball games and football games and stuff. I still said the, the Lord's Prayer. Right. Um, even though I didn't, you know, I, I by then I would have said it was bullshit. Uh, you know, so. I mean, I would have done the same thing if we if we had grown up uh, in a Mormon household or something like that. Where you know, I mean, it, it's a different kind of excommunication if you're open about it. But I don't know. Is that? I don't know. Do no, no, I know. I get you uh, totally. I get it. I get it. Anyway, do you guys remember when it was that you first started doubting? I don't. I don't really have a moment, but I, I kind of, I, I never had that experience that you had where I was you know, religious to start with. I would, I remember being very young and it was kind of the thing that like really turned me off of religion was, uh, I probably went to a vacation Bible school with one of my friends during a summer, uh, at the local Baptist church. And I just remember like the preacher doing, uh, you know, doing a whole bit on like the, the lake of fire and eternal damnation. And like, just like, they're talking about the meat puppet song. Yeah. Uh <laughs> but I mean to to me it was like that was really scary to think about and I just didn't want to be scared, so I like <laughs> I didn't like they offered to like have people come up and be saved at the end of the sermon. And I didn't do that. I was just like I thought about it a good lot good while and I was just like, Yeah, I don't wanna go listen to the people talk about scary stuff. And like I always, I always hated waking up early on Sunday mornings. Like I never, I wasn't into it as much as you were. Like, oh, I was, I was all about it. Yeah, yeah. I never missed a prayer morning or nighttime. Hundred percent in. Yeah, I, I was never at that point to like lose that. I, it was just okay. kind of like, you know, my friends would invite me to vacation Bible school. Yeah, they'd play wiffle ball and VBS was fun. I'm yeah. not gonna lie. And the Kool Aid was on point. The Nilla wafers. Oh yeah! Oh hell yeah! Well, like they had those like they were not- sinful, sinfully good. <laughs> Elijah, sinfully good Nilla wafers. Mm. At what point yeah. did you say, "Hey"? This I don't know, man. I don't. I don't know what triggered it. I remember being like uh, eleven or twelve. Like I, the thing I had a hard time with was uh, the idea that there's nothing in the afterlife, and like I would get stomach aches at night thinking about you know just just becoming nothing. And then I don't know one night, like I was 11 or 12 and I'd kind of been up and crying about it. And I got up and I I knocked on mom and dad's bedroom door and I was like, Hey, and they were like, what, what are you doing? And I was like, uh, just want to tell you guys I'm an atheist. And mom was like, go to bed. (laughs) So (laughs) that was, that was pretty much it. Um, yeah, 11, 12. I don't remember really. I mean, I just, I remember, but I was pretty open about it too in junior high and high school there in Smithville, you know. And I I, I faced the uh, the questions, the daily questions, like uh, yeah, same here. like oh, if you don't believe in God, then uh, I guess you could just rape and murder. And at the time, Penn and Teller had not given the what is the penultimate answer to that question. Uh, I think it was I think it was Penn or was it Teller? Uh, uh, I, think I think it was Penn who said Gillette Penn. Penn was the one that talked. Yeah, and he said uh, he said I do rape and murder as much as I want to. Zero. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, I didn't have that snappy comeback. But I, but I remember asking a girl one time, you know, is uh, believing you're going to burn in the pit the only thing that's keeping you from murdering me right now? And she was like, no. And I was like, well, there you go. There's just, there's, just, I had to deal with that on a daily basis. It sucked. But uh, I mean, I, I told some people, but I, I wasn't like, yeah. I, tr- I tried to, I don't know. I, I, tr- I guess there was a fear of being an outcast in, in that way. You know what I mean? Well, I think the which problem think with me normal, was... Which I also at, think is human nature. Yeah. 
but I think my problem was that it was about that same time that I started growing my hair long and wearing Metallica shirts. And I was just, you know, the small town Mississippi devil worshiper at that point anyway. So I kind of got kind of asked for it myself, I guess. But contrary to popular belief, I've never worshipped any devils. Uh, what are those little Debbie? Um, uh, <laughs> Devil's food kick. Oh God, I worship the fuck out of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I have an altar on my desk <laughs> of sacrificed rappers. <laughs> <laughs> I have a. Uh, no. If you don't mind, let me. I, I want to read. Oh, I got a backlight on this thing. I forgot about Shoot. that. Shoot. Uh. I'm going to pull this up almost randomly, uh, but I got a couple of things I highlighted that I thought were good. Okay. Uh, things I hadn't thought about. Um, here we go. This paragraph is, is really good. Uh, the other point, well, I'll, I'll read this first. It says, yet with all the strange appearance of humility and this contempt for human reason, he ventures into the boldest presumptions. He finds fault with everything. His selfishness is never satisfied. His ingratitude is never at an end. He takes on himself to direct the Almighty what to do, even in the government of the universe. He prays dictatorially. When it is sunshine, he prays for rain. And when it is rain, he prays for sunshine. He follows the same idea in everything that he prays for. For what is the amount of all his prayers but an attempt to make the Almighty change his mind? And act otherwise than he does. It is as if he were to say, thou knowest not so well as I. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's kind of mm-hmm. like, that's, it's not a very deep observation, but yeah, it's, it's 100% true. Uh, the yeah. other thing that the, he spends a lot of time, like what I would call proving that Moses could not have written the books of Moses. I was like, yeah, that's, after that point, you could say QED. Uh, Bible is sufficiently undermined, but that, this like halfway through, um, mm. he talks about how, you know, something that I'm sure we all thought about, why didn't God just kill the devil? And then he, <laughs> but he, he goes on to answer it. He's like, well, the reason is because he kind of needs the devil. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so that, that's why, um, but that goes back to what you were saying about people feeling so, uh, persecuted, like, and nobody's really after them, Elijah, like you were talking about. Right. Um, they they kind of need that to, uh, the, you know, that's their manifestation of the devil that they need to to whip people into that frenzy or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But the whole enterprise is for the birds, folks. Yep. It is. It is. You got any more quotes? Uh, I'm sure I do. I mean, I, I've got a few, but I, I don't really. Yeah, I don't. I don't think there's really any merit in reading off what I've got. I mean, I, I do. I do believe there are a couple. Uh, there was one where you, we were just talking about, Ansel, you just said uh, as a child. Uh, T-Pain said that uh, I believe in the same manner at this moment uh, that any system of religion that has anything in it that shocks the mind of a child cannot be a true system. And I think in that point of the book, he was talking about, you know, parents would talk about uh, the Gospels, but when they would talk about God actually having his own son crucified, they would kind of withhold that until they were older. Um yeah, I like that. I, I think uh, it's uh, – I've never pressed any religion on my children, and I don't think anyone should, and I think it's for that very reason. I think uh, you get, you got to let them make up their own mind, right? I think totally. so. Absolutely. Uh, here's a quote. This is a mic drop. Uh, this is a T-Pain mic drop moment. <laughs> okay. Oh, shit. This is the last one I'll read. I have a few more, but I think this will do. Uh, he's talk- He just basically – he, he had proven that Moses didn't write the those books of the Hebrew Bible. Um, and he says, Take away from Genesis the belief that Moses was the author, on which only the strange belief that it is the word of God has stood. And there remains nothing of Genesis but an anonymous book of stories, fables, and traditionary or invented absurdities or of downright lies. The story of Eve and the serpent and of Noah and his ark drops to a level with the Arabian Nights, Without the merit of being entertaining. Yeah, that, that, that would be very good. So my notes there are just like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> At least the Arabian Nights are fun. Yeah, so anyway, yeah. T-Pain, I like him. I'm a fan. 
Yeah, He's dropping that truth bomb. We could uh, we could probably read quotes of this all day and just yeah. be like, "Damn, that's yeah. good." But oh snap! Yeah. And like, yeah, I'm not gonna read any more of my highlights because it's basically more of the same. Yeah, it, same here. Right. Like, yeah. He he destroys them with like logic, facts, and reason. Oh yes, and owns Christianity for all time. R.I.P. Christianity. Yeah. Zero A.D. to <laughs> 1797. R.I.P. <laughs> <laughs> we've done it we've done it that's very good um i'm gonna i'm gonna do my uh mic drop quote and i believe this is when he was talking about the three things that modern christianity are built on and that's mystery miracle and prophecy um he says the first two are incompatible with true religion uh, being mystery and miracle he he proves that earlier uh, in his own way the first the Two first are incompatible with true religion, and the third ought always to be suspected. And I found that to be really funny because he sort of breaks down prophecy in the beginning as being a, a mistranslation of the ancient Hebrew, right, that a prophet right. was just basically a musician. Kind of like uh, the 72 virgins in uh, Islam or whatever is actually, like, they, they think it might be 72 raisins. Is, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's I, real. I've not heard that. That's oh. good. Yeah. California raisins, peace be upon them. All right, guys, this has been fun. Yeah, we we just it's, hit the hour mark, by the way. So it's been fun. Yeah, I don't want to go over an hour. I don't want to seem overly aggressive in my uh, personal bid to get in the trenches with uh, the All Jesus Station there in Mississippi. Uh, but I'm in those trenches. I've also noticed when I was there that they don't use that uh, lingo as much anymore. So I'm taking it up. I'm I'm bringing back the call to arms, and I am actively going to start persecuting the non persecuted. Um no, this is an uh it's been it's been entertaining. Um I I'm, I'm glad you guys liked the book because I, I myself found it to be dry and boring. It was pretty boring. Um uh, yeah, man, and I was I was kind of fully expecting to get uh flamed for that. But we've done it. Uh we've done another book clubbing. Oh uh, read it about you're, ready to you forget huh? one one thing. No, no, I I haven't forgotten yet. Okay. I'm about ready to turn over this conch and uh, let the command of the HMS listener go to uh, to my brother Dylan. Wait, we gotta rate it can, first, dude. He can guide us where we're gonna go. But first, hey, you gonna do the ratings? For ratings. Are you gonna do the ratings, Elijah? <laughs> it's time for ratings. It's time for ratings. Um, who's ready? I'm ready. If I'm ready to go. Okay. Go. All right, uh, my rating for The Age of Reason by Thomas Paine is a hill of beans, because it's really all that it amounts to. There was a very effective propaganda campaign after uh, the first little surge of popularity that his pamphlet had, and we are, yeah, still living under the, um, yeah, just rampant Christianity, um, and all over the world, you know, um, fundamentalist islam is no better or worse than fundamentalist christianity or fundamentalist judaism or zionism um so yeah uh great job with the writing thomas Paine. uh i like beans beans are good but a hill of them ain't gonna get you get you anywhere (laughs) all right well done dylan an honest rating i like that ansel okay uh i'm gonna give it the uh, MTV Awards Moon Man statue. Because <laughs> um, the, w- the way I feel about this book is that it's, it's like the moon landing in that... It was uh, fake? It w- <laughs> <laughs> Stanley Kubrick filmed the whole thing. Uh, y'all, y'all that flag, that flag didn't even move. Now in the, uh, you know, at the time, it was like a, a major event. But now, in hindsight, it's just... Or in the modern age, it's just like a dull and trivial thing. So that that's kind of the like I would have loved I would have eaten this book up when I was a teenager. Right, me too. Um, but yeah, it wasn't. It, it kind of dragged me back into uh, a world I didn't really want to go to. And I think like I feel like there's sort of um, there's sort of a disinterest whenever there's a new s- space happening now. People just don't care. And uh, also, I guess you could say the same thing about MTV too. Uh, it was spectacular at one point, and now it's just. Meh. So yeah, Moo Man for T Pain. All right, <laughs> T Pain gets the VMA Choice Award or whatever it's called. All right, 
I am going to give this book uh, the rating of one very sad Joel Osteen. Um, okay. <laughs> a this book that's gonna, uh, that's gonna be a hell of a Photoshop job because I don't know man ever not had that it's easy you just take that face you just take that smile and turn it upside down <laughs> you know you know the old <laughs> you know the old adage yeah. you just flip flip that sucker or you know like that's probably I don't a, care. exactly how old how I'll do it yeah I, just, I, I I thought about this it's, yeah, it's okay. just flip it yeah it's just I want a one sad Joel Osteen face and and here's why this book didn't make old T Pain any money. He didn't get no money for this book. He yeah. threw out his thoughts and made them cheap as dirt so everyone could get a hold of these pamphlets, same way he did with Common Sense. Uh, the man was uh, closer to Jesus Christ than Joel Osteen will ever be. Mic drop. I will say Y'all, it's close, but whatever. Closer. Anyway, mic drop. I dropped it. I already dropped it. See? All right, I picked it back up. Uh, here's the conch. Oh, th- thank you. This is a mighty fine conch. Wait, I'm still sliding it. Hold on. Man, this gag always lands. It's, it's so funny every time. <laughs> All right, there's your conch. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, guys, we live in truly dumb times. Um, <laughs> dilly dilly. And the... <laughs> The best way I know to deal with uh, living in truly absurd times is uh, the writings of my favorite author, Kurt Vonnegut. Uh, and I was kind of, I, I knew I wanted to pick a, a Kurt Vonnegut book, but I didn't know which one I wanted to read. So I've, uh, I've got a little something here. It's time for us to play for the first time ever. Will of Vonnegut. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Eli just beat up. No. Bit. No, no. Wrong audio clip. But uh, Ansel, I'll show you here. Um, Elijah, I would show you, but you're not physically here. Well, you actually made this. Uh, oh, well, I can see the back of your hand in the back of a phone. Oh, you've, so you've you've been able to oh, see my wow. video. Yeah. Okay. I didn't, yeah. I didn't know that was on. Oh, so yeah. uh, Wheel of Vonnegut. Okay. W- w- this is the Wheel of Vonnegut. What we've got on the wheel? We've got uh, Mother Night, The Sirens of Titan, Slaughterhouse Five, Ooh. Cat's Ooh. Cradle, Slapstick, Player Piano, uh, God Bless You, Doctor Kavorkian, Bankrupt, <laughs> Welcome to the Monkey House, Time Quake, <laughs> Hocus Pocus, God Bless You, uh, Mister Rosewater, Bluebeard, uh, Breakfast of Champions, and I think we're back around. So that's what's on the wheel. We're going to spin the wheel. Uh, so that's so, pretty much everything but Galapagos, right? Yeah, I left out Galapagos since we, yeah, we did okay. it recently. Uh, I left out uh, Jailbird and there's like one called Dead Eye Dick that I didn't care for. Yeah, that's I, not a great one. Those are okay. like the two that I haven't read, and I think I've read all the ones on the wheel, okay. but that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've read all of these as well. Uh, Ansel, do you want to do the honors? Yeah, sure. Um, Actually, swipe it. Yeah, you can swipe it or you can press the. No. No. Okay. All right. Big money, big money. Oh, big money. It's crazy. No whammies. No, it's no, no whammies. <laughs> oh, it's at it, it, the very last second, it's picked over to slapstick. Awesome. All right. I was hoping it would land on Cat's Crate also. So yeah, that's our next book. It's going to be Slapstick by uh, Kurt Vonnegut. Okay. Nice. Well done. I like how that was chosen. That's fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely saving that for future episodes. Yeah, sure. Next time we need to uh, uh, get a little refresher on uh, the absurd, the absurdity, we'll uh, refer to uh, the Will of Vonnegut. <laughs> okay. Give Elijah his conch back. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think you put a new wrinkle in my conch. All right, you've uh, you've uh, wasted some more time with us here at Book Club, the podcast. Um, 
we want to thank you for your time. As always, you can check us out on Apple. Go on there and give us a five star rating, and then go into the comment section after you give your um. You have to give a five star rating to leave a comment, but then after you do that, go in there and leave a comment and give us your own uh, made up rating. Tell us what you think. Uh, you can find us on Reddit. You can find us on uh, the YouTube's. You can find us on the Facebooks. I believe you can find us everywhere. You can also just find us on www.bookclubcast.com. You'll find all episodes episodes, links to uh, things that we uh, recorded that were not episodes that were pretty funny all the same, uh, some that are not funny. So anyway, we really enjoyed having you along. Get oh. out there in those trenches for old tea paint, huh? What, Dylan? Uh, one more thing before we go. We all kind of forgot about this. One year book club, guys. Oh, yeah. This Coming is the, up. the one year anniversary, and we've done it. One oh, year. that's this one? Yeah. Yeah, this is 26. I thought it was the next one. No, nope, 26 every two weeks is 52, 52 weeks in a year. 20 episode 20 one year book club. Hey, congratulations, congratulations. guys. Congratulations. Right. We, we did it. Little self congratulation congratulatory circle jerk there for everyone to hear about but yay, we did it. I am proud of us. I know. I didn't think we would make it this far. But apparently I'm the only one. It's, so It's it's a testament <laughs> to how easy it is to make a podcast. Yeah. Yeah, like we're the hardest lazy. part of this hot, this podcast is reading the books, right? For sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, it's been fun. It's been a fun year. Uh, love you guys. Thanks for doing it with me. Oh, I love, love you too, too bro. Uh, oh, that's so sweet. All you Just listeners um. out there, get your get your get your upside down crosses sharpened and get in the trenches. Uh, the 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 war rages on. We love you all. Stay safe. Uh, what 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 they tell you is happening is not what's happening. Where we go, one we go all. Ding da dum da ding da dum da dum da ding da ding da da dum da 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 dum. Scatman's world. Do you let the beat